Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. John Blackmore. I work for Frank Cassidy. He asked me to bring you these bottles so you could choose which one you prefer for the gang. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in then. Getting in Farnham's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. I always have an ace up my sleeve. Blackmore? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin. I ratted out a two-timer, and now he's dead. He told the husband and he restored her honor, right? Something like that. Well then, what's the problem, son? You did the right thing, and that pig got what he was in for. Listen here, you're gonna get your reward, son, from our Lord Jesus in this here bottle. One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust, the hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Not even a Bible. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shave last night. No. Please, come in. Of course. I remember you. Take a seat. I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. Sure, I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now, please answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave?
And then, sure enough, Booth put the nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. My second marriage, too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my guns and only deal with her curse. Even if I did end up marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm Cassidy's slave. He lent me the money for a game deposit. And I lost it all. Now I have to work off my debt. Oh, Cassidy's not your problem, son. It's poverty. Sure enough, I had to pay my own deposit this morning to y'all. And that was just petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me my receipts. What do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I gotta get somewhere. Let's just say, I get it. I just. Or put it over. Over. I think. I'll be right back. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no who in the hell? Farnham. My God, if it ain't the hero of the day. It's not going to be easy to sound Texan. But I'll give it my best shot. I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. This'll surely imbue me with the Texan spirit. Nothing says Texan like a cowboy hat. I'll be damned. Knowing Farnham, <laughs> the owner of this yes, bra sir. only came here for business. Sure enough, I'm fixing to play poker with him. <laughs> anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out, what else do I need? Luckily, there was only one Kinney in Farnham's address book. Kinney Eeks, residing at...
Cornell Plaza, Manhattan, stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. At least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, his female companions have less of a hard time. They smell like a party. Don't tell me, Billy Bob. This here is my new friend, Fox. Am I right? Sure enough, your barber was fixing to give me a shave. <laughs> you can get a good shave at another time. Billy Bob is always at our beck and call. Of course. Hey, come on. Get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. It'll be my pleasure. Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. No offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. Y'all are dealing with the worst player in Texas. You're just trying to make me overconfident, aren't you? The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues, then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. Had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas, where gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> ding Dong! That's it. <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly. Polly. Uh, no. Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Polly. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. 
You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women. They even take our damn names. <laughs> you're too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool? And I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about fairy fellas such as yourself. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. Guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Those their athletes hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer, the reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. Billy Bob, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. if you won, Farnham. The worst player in Texas, huh? Hey, Quinn, you better start unbuckling that championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't over yet. Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, 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 by the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, plain bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassidy. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fella's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. There. She's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizers and all that. That's it, tranquilizers. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, too. Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on. Come on. Give me. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you, relatively speaking. Well, I'll be damned! I don't believe this! What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever, and that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham. Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing and he's gonna lose it all with poker. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm, yeah, so how can I be of help? Homicidal boxers like Bobby Yale. Ha! <laughs> That's some piece of news, huh? Hey, I don't know if he did it, but the real problem is that the fight against my champ Stone might not even freaking happen. The good news is that I've almost convinced the governor to let him out of prison on the day of the fight. 
under police escort, that is. I bet you the audience gets a kick out of that. Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. That bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, banning boxers from official competitions when the managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Come on, come on, let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game, unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. I dare say Texan boys do respond to a good beating. Hey, careful, Prince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, Kenny told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, Perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. No, deserving or not, the man would live. I won't Cassidy. put a finger on them until they're 12. After that, well, <laughs> let's just say some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnham? That damn eagle represents the lowest scum of our society. There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. Sooner or later, the police are gonna bust your ass. Quince. What the hell are you talking about? I bet you're as bad at hiding those poor girls as you are at keeping that ace up your sleeve. What? You lying piece of shit. Quince? Uh, don't believe a word he's saying, Frank. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more. Huh. For washing up. It's a deal. <laughs> hey, good call, Farnham. I owe you one. Please, take that flying scumbag's tokens. And mine too, if you want them. I'm feeling generous. Hey, turns out the governor accepted my suggestion to let Bobby yell out of prison on the day of the fight. Hey, this is turning out to be the perfect night. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If 
if our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Signed, Frank Cassidy. tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, No, I'm grateful for your kind help. Last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans. As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my day. I feel shame. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. Maybe I should have given myself a beat. Backside. Finally, I need you at the gym now, please. 